Hello, welcome to the program today. I'm so glad that you joined me. I want to share with you today about how you can make it through any situation, any circumstance, whatever pressure you may feel today, whatever you feel is hindering you or holding back your happiness, your relationships, holding you back, whatever walls you may feel like have been presented in front of you to keep you from moving forward, you can make it through those things and you can be the person that you desire to be. And so in this eight-part series that I did, you can make it. You can actually is the series. You can think right. You can be healed. You can live in peace. You can be free. You can win. You can make it. You can love and have power. I share in a small group setting how you can overcome. And I want to share that with you today. So let's go to a quick teaching now. Now Let me just talk to you a little bit about hindrances to prayer because sometimes we go, wow, I'm praying. I'm not seeing these things happen. What's going on? There are things that can hinder your prayer life. There's strife. The Bible says where there's strife, there's confusion, and there's every evil work. So that tells me if you're married, you better not let strife and division come in your home. Because when Satan divides, he conquers, right? And a house divided won't stand. So the first one is unforgiveness. Dealing with your spouse especially. Those people in your family, those people closest to you, the enemy will try to cause division between you to get you into criticism or judgmental attitudes, unforgiveness, unbelief. It will even turn over into. And it'll also try to do that between you and your minister, your pastor, uh, the people that speak into your life. If he can make you offended with your pastor or you hear a rumor or gossip, that's why gossip is so dangerous. You don't want any part of that. But if you hear a rumor, what it does is make you reject the word of God, not just the messenger. You, you reject the message. So you've got to be very, very careful about that. You know, ministers make mistakes. You may not agree with somebody. You know, I take it before the Lord and I keep myself clean before the Lord. I wouldn't speak evil. Uh, you could go to that person and talk to them about it, but we're not supposed to go to others and create strife and division. So be careful for unforgiveness. That's an area that will affect your prayer life. Faith works by love. So don't let offense in there. Matthew 18 tells us we can agree and touch something, but we can't agree if we're walking in strife or uh, division. Uh, one person can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. That tells me if two people agree, there's a lot more power there. And that's why the body of Christ coming together and praying together, there's really, well, in the, under an anointing, there's incredible power there. The second thing is praying traditions and not the word. We've got to pray the word of God. You can't let religious tradition control what you believe and think. Jesus couldn't do many works in his own hometown because of their unbelief. So religious tradition, be careful of that. Uh, the word of God is the authority. I don't care what you learned in church when you were a little child. I don't care what religious tradition has told you or what a teacher uh, said on t uh, a preacher said on TV or teachers said. Does it line up with the word of God? The word of God is the final authority. Ephesians 6 says, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication. So what are we praying? The word of God. The scripture tells us right there. Okay, another area that you can get into besides unforgiveness, praying traditions or, or uh, not knowing what the word says, is the third thing is worry or doubt. Um, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. If you're worrying, worry prayers are not really prayers. You can start there talking to God, but don't leave there. If you're just worrying, oh God, I don't know what I'm to do about my kids. They're not serving the Lord. Things aren't going right. Things aren't well. That's just a gripe session, okay? <laughs> you're just telling God all the things that are going wrong. At some point, it's got to turn over to, Father, I thank you. And if you just need to get the word of God out, find out what the word says about this circumstance and then begin to pray what God says. Cast the care on him and then pray what the word of God says. Matthew 17. Uh, Jesus told them, because you have so little faith, replied Jesus. He's talking to the disciples why they couldn't cast this thing out. He said, I assure you that if you have as much faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, up you get and move over there and it will move. You will find nothing is impossible. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. What does that tell me? 
that there are some strongholds, there are some spirits, there are some warfares that you're going to face that you've got to really seek God. You've got to fast. You've got to pray. It's not just one of those small little things, but you've got to really spend time in the presence of God. And we know that Jesus was fasting for 40 days and nights when he went into the wilderness and Satan came against him with temptation. Jesus had to fast to be able to hear from the Father. He spent much time in prayer and he had to do that. So certainly you and I need to, right? Prayer is exciting though. It's a great thing. It's my favorite. I love, I love the word, but I love prayer. I love to get in the presence of God, let the anointing of God come in there. A fourth area that can be a problem to you is disobedience. Luke 18 says, and he spoke a parable to them to this end that men to, ought to always pray and not to faint. Jesus tried to get his disciples to pray. We talked about that and they didn't step in prayer. And because of that, they fell into some situations. Peter, you know, sinned. He was disobedient. Romans 8, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. The Spirit makes intercession. So when you don't know what to do, you don't know how to pray. And we're going to talk about that in another session. How does the Spirit make intercession? We'll talk about that in another session. Philippians 4, 6, we talk about, don't be anxious, just come to God in prayer. Stay out of doubt, stay out of double-mindedness, and out of disobedience. James 1, 6 says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. So when you come to God and pray, ask in faith. Don't doubt. Ask in faith because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now, I don't want to make you feel bummed out about it. Just get in the word enough to where you're convinced so that when you pray, you pray that word and it's faith. It's faith. You're not just mumbling prayers. You're not begging God. Prayer is not begging God. You never see Jesus begging God. Oh God, please, 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 please. Oh God, you know how much I've suffered. Oh God, you know how difficult this is. Yeah, he knows all of that. But he also knows he sent his word and healed you. He sent Jesus to pay the price. He's given you precious promises. The Bible says he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So quit moping, quit whining, quit griping, and get out the word of God. And remember that peace is on the inside, right? We get in the presence of God, get in the word of God, pray and the power of God will meet you right there. Then you can thank God and it is finished. Amen? Amen. It's done. It's done. Another area that you have to be careful. So doubt, double-mindedness, and disobedience. The D's. Just throw those out, okay? Five is selfishness. James 4, 3 says, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it on your lusts. Again, faith works by love, not by selfishness. Now, does that mean you can't have a new car? Is that lust? I don't know. What is it in your situation? God wants good things for you. God wants great things for you. So lust is a different word, right? Lust is more like, I have to have this. Like David lusted after another woman. He wanted someone else. God had already given him a wife, but he didn't want his wife. He wanted another person's wife. Okay, so maybe God wants to give you a car, but you want someone else's car, right? And you're lusting after something and you're jealous and you're envious. You're not going to receive that thing that you're asking for in that scenario. Okay, but I don't want you to think that you can't ask God for great things. Sometimes people use that scripture in a way that makes you think like, you know, I'll just be happy with my little shack and my crumb and my little broken down car, you know, with the rusted out sides. We started there, but don't be content to just stay there. You got to be content in the circumstance you're in right now. You know, worship God there, but pray and believe. Petition God. He wants to bless you with good things, but don't be self-centered and ask a miss just to consume it on your lust so you can say, look at me, I'm all that. Look what I drive, look what I have, look at who I am. Whose glory are you trying to bring it to? Do you want to end the war on sadness? Then click the button right there and subscribe.